everybody and welcome to another episode of Automotive Carnage. In today's episode, we continue work on the 2009 Holden VE that I stupidly brought for no apparent reason other than it was a really good deal. Welcome back to Automotive Carnage, my name's DJ and this is my 2009 Holden Ute. Now I picked this thing up a few weeks ago for two and a half grand and why did I buy it? Uh, it was a good deal. There, <laughs> there's actually no logical reason why I need yet another car. Um, I did previously just get rid of two vehicles and now I've gained one and it just it, it gets out of control. I'm serious, it's a condition, it's a horrible condition. Anyway. This one we got for two and a half grand. It's had some cosmetic issues. Mechanically, it runs pretty sweet. Really happy with the way it runs for a vehicle that's got 261,000 kilometers. So far, we've had to replace the passenger side windows. They were completely smashed out by a not so savory person of society trying to gain access to the valuables inside. We've changed the wing mirrors. They were pretty smashed and in bad condition. And we've also given this thing a good cut and polish and a clean. Uh, that's probably the thing I'm most proud of at the moment. It's come up looking absolutely amazing for an old work unit. Uh, the shine is great. It's actually, yeah, really, really proud of that. So, yeah, anyway, today we're going to change the front suspension. Um, the previous owner changed the passenger side strut, and as you can hear, they didn't quite pull it in properly. So, for the sake of 160 bucks, I've got two brand new struts for the left and the right, and we'll chuck those in as well. Now, I've also got about $1,300 worth of new old stock arriving soon. Uh, the freight company tells me that should be here tomorrow, and that's going to be the goodies that's going to set this car apart from the rest of the pack. Going to make it really stand out. So, we'll head back to the shop now. <coughs> shop. <laughs> we'll head back to my front yard, because I've got too many cars in the backyard to work on. So, we'll head to the front yard, and uh, we'll get this thing up in the air, and we'll get those front struts changed out, and we'll get running really nicely. I think I just found out another reason why it's clanking about in here. Yeah, that sway bar link's not even connected. It's just flopping around. ABS cable is not damaged luckily, which is good. And there's a bit of pitting up on the shaft there, but yeah, that's definitely a concern. Um, considering I lent this to a mate to drive 380 kilometers one way to Kalgoorlie and then they would drive it all the way back and that sway bar link is just flopping around. Oh dearie me. Okay, well we've got new struts so might as well carry on putting them in. Okay, so here's our used shock. We've got it out now. Um, I did not expect to find that sway bar link disconnected the way it was. It appears we have a nullifane bush on top here, um, but because this is all completely unknown, and I know that this one was changed separately from the driver's side, I don't know if the driver's side is going to have a nullifane bushing on top. So uh, I've got brand new ones that come with the kit that we're putting into it with the new struts. So we're going to use that so then we know that it's done and it can be done properly. So I've got my spring compressors, we'll compress the spring and then undo the, well, so the top. Get a nice shiny new one, but you even have a dust cover over the shaft, which is fantastic, so. Oh, new bolts in the bottom as well. Cool, we'll definitely be using those. Yep, all right, let's get into it. Job done. We've got a new strut in there, got our sway bar link uh, bolted in properly, which is really good. Our new bolts 
down the bottom here. I had to reuse some of the old rubbers, which aren't too good, but we didn't get new ones. But we did get a new dust cover, which is in there nicely. All our hoses are back in place. So, and then up top is done as well. Well, there we have it. The ute is up and running and in a good condition that if I was smart, I would stop right about now and sell it as it is. But we can't be doing that. So far it's cost about $760 in parts with the new struts, uh, the new wing mirrors, the new windows and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's, it's looking really good. It's a bit dirty at the moment because we had to go do a rubbish run, take all the crap out of the back tray. Because, well, I can't leave it alone at this stage. We had to get some more goodies. So, here we have a VE Calais door trim. Uh, yep, one for each side. Got cool little pockets on that. Lever inserts, suede inserts, it's looking fantastic. Over here, we have spanking brand new old stock steering wheel. Uh, again, lever steering wheel. All we need to do is swap over our airbag and our controls, and then that will be good to go. Now, over here, we also have a new gear stick. This is all original old stock, which makes it even that little bit more special. Open that up. Come on, out you come. And here, lever holden by design gear shifter, which uh, feels pretty plasticky, plasticky if I'm honest, but it does look really good. Now, you're probably wondering what's in the big round boxes underneath. Well, this is our little piece of resistance. We picked these up for $495, spanking brand new, export only for the Pontiacs, 18 by 8 Pontiac G8 rims. <laughs> So those are awesome. They're really going to help set this car apart. So as I said, all this stuff I didn't need, but it's definitely going to help this car be stand out from the crowd when we do go to sell it. So all that extra stuff is what cost the $1,300. So hopefully we'll be able to move it on fairly quickly. That's why I don't fall in love with those wheels. Oh, they're beautiful. All right, so next we'll just quickly whack in all that interior stuff and make that cockpit such a beautiful place to sit and drive. And then we'll head down to the shed and we'll pop our brand new tires onto those rims. Hopefully without scratching them. Uh, my machine's not too good at not scratching stuff. It's a bit of an old machine. Um, and then whack those on and then job done. And we'll do a bit of a tally of everything at the end. Let's do this. Okay, we've run into a slight complication here. Um, I was advised that to use the steering wheel with the Omega uh, controls would be fine, um, but it turns out that I just need to use these little inserts. But when you put the insert in, they overlap here where the controls are, um, and that's a complete like that should be smaller, and then it screws into these little holes here. So I either have to make a decision of do I run the controls and have an exposed steering wheel. Or do I take the controls out and put that in the way it's meant to be? Um, I think I might put that in. Either way, the steering wheel is going to come off again once I get these little parts um, of the right size. So that's a pain in the butt. But um, you know, I got to use this car today to get to work. So controls can come out. I'll put these in, make it look all pretty. And... Um, yeah, I'll just have to go find some smaller controls to fit in there. 
All right, let me slap all this back together and we'll chuck it back into the car. say a project car actually completed which is the first time I've ever said that on this channel which is um, quite a big mo moment for me I'm quite proud that we've actually managed to finish something and not just start something and abandon it halfway through anyway I digress uh, we've finished the VEU and it's absolutely it looks amazing it's come out really really good especially with the Calais doors the Pontiac G8 rims the lever steering wheel all those little extra bits and pieces uh, proper wax job on here which unfortunately it kind of started to rain today so there's a few watermarks on there I need to clean off, but this car is looking absolutely amazing. I'm really, really proud of it. So there are still a few little touch-up jobs that I need to do. As I said, the audio controls on the steering wheel don't fit uh, with the plastic surrounds that go on the spokes. So I've ordered the correct ones and I'll be here next week sometime. Um, along with um, center caps for the rims. I didn't realize these, that was like an optional extra and they were like $40 each. So I've managed to find some second-hand ones that I can pop in there and just finish those wheels off and make them look really smick. Um, but yeah, that's it. And well, how much did it cost? You might be wondering. Well, I'll let you know. The vehicle cost me two and a half grand and all the parts that I've put on and those little bits that are still yet to come have cost about $2,300. So all in, I'm at about $4,700. Um, and the cheapest one of these on car sales and Gumtree at the moment is about eight grand. So there's definitely plenty of room and profit to be made in this. So will it be enough profit to beat XA Coupe Guy and his FG Falcon? Well, we'll soon find out. But um, I'll just now list this and as soon as I sell it, I'll let you guys know. And um, that'll be really, really cool. I think that'll be a good little finish to this video. I definitely do not need a two-seater ute. Um, I have two kids and well I can't just pick favorites and only take one of them it's just not gonna work too well so anyway that's the VE done next week we're on to oh, I, don't know, I probably should do some work on that Crescita I've got the seats pulled out of it and I've got some um, Recaros ready to go in it so stay tuned for that one see you guys later so I'm just heading out for a test drive in the uh, Holden for your to See what it sounds like. I'm not sure we can see them just up on the road there. Yeah, this is when you know you live in the outback. Drive forward, see how close we can get. He's not a bad size. Oh, don't hop away. Come back. Come back, Skippy. There you go. Skippy there in the tree. He's just going to hang out. Hey mate, how's it going? You know which way to the pub? No? You're not going to talk? How close can I get to you? Yeah, I'll pass.